Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma and Brian E. Roach. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. My name is Joe Kuzma, and looking around the room, there he is, my brother from another mother, a one Mr. Brian E. Roach. Brian, I haven't seen you all year, man. What's been going on? <laughs> How's it hanging? That, that is that is a vast overstatement of the truth. <laughs> it feels it, like it. All year. It does feel like it's been a while, though. Uh, it's just, you know, life's busy, man. It's been a minute and has been. Maybe three. Mm. I think it's been three minutes. And you may have missed the last show, man. I was just, uh, I'm, I'm guzzling the coffee, man. I need my, I need my octane. I need my fuel here. Uh, at least this stuff is still at a decent price. I wouldn't want to put it in, in my car or in my car or truck, but hey, uh, I'll, I'll deal with a, with a K cup or a bag of the grinds, the ground coffee every now and then. So that's nasty stuff. No, oh, no, that's come nasty. on, man. Coffee well, at, is least, nasty. at least everyone doesn't have to hear me take my little pauses here. Um, to drink or swig my coffee or my water or whatever. I got you here, man. My backup, you're my backup. Well, not necessarily my backup, but at least you could stand in uh, instead of the radio right. silence. So uh, OTAs are going on. It's uh, football in shorts. It's exciting to see some of the young lads, even the old lads out there throwing uh, throwing passes. You know, he could throw past 40 yards. So he throws it 45 to prove a point to, yeah. A, yeah, to a running back. The running back catches it. And it's like everybody's just like, oh, this is the thing. It's like, can't we just be excited about seeing that th- they practice? practice makes perfect is the saying as it goes if you yep. don't practice then what the heck and, and now all of a sudden we retreat and we we'll talk about this again when training camp comes along which may be a tentative date uh, there's some stuff floating around as early as july 21st doesn't mean they will start but they're permitted the steelers are as are the cowboys they have the hall of fame game so uh since they are playing an earlier preseason game they get to get a little bit of a jump on their off-season preparations as opposed to some other teams. But right now, the off-season uh, training workouts, they're not allowed to say that the media and that's not allowed to say who is or isn't there. We know that some teams completely opting out. We know that a lot of that has nothing to do with COVID. The players' union just kind of wants to not do these things. And I don't know. It makes me kind of wonder in one way because I'm like – it's good. You see Ben Roethlisberger out there. You you see the rookies. You, you get to see, um, you know, uh, Najee Harris, uh, Kendrick Green. Man, their footwork just amazing stuff. To, to oh watch. yeah, and good stuff. Najee's hands and all these other different things. And it's like I get excited about that. And then you get people that still complain. Well, wait until they put pads on. Well, yeah, that's true. But you know, just get just be happy about what we got here. And, and yeah. Take a, no. some joy in the moment. <laughs> I just, people just like to be too negative, even within our own comments section. You know, somebody, uh, I'm not even getting into that. Screw it. It's uh, not even worth acknowledging, but some people just uh, tend to dwell on the negative. And just because we don't do that, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm a biased homer as if I've ever been uh, secretive about that. <laughs> you know, um, the workouts, though, like I don't understand why players. Maybe because some of them they do their own thing. They go to Arizona or Florida or wherever it's better weather if they're not already there or living there. But I felt like last year a lot of the injuries we saw in the NFL, not just with the Steelers but around the league, as a lot of things that had to deal with lack of conditioning due to the all the COVID and pandemic precautions and changes in the rules and the workouts and. I just, I just think I, I wholeheartedly believe, like let's say Devin Bush or Bud Dupree that was a cause of either not enough rest is one of the things the condensed workouts at the beginning, and then just not enough conditioning to begin with, but you'll have people complain. Oh, so-and-so didn't show up when they don't, they want to get on the same page with this Mac candidate thing as if they're not already doing some sort of zoom meetings or there aren't playbooks that are being handed. I mean, come on now. I'm, you know, it's like, I kind of, I kind of smile too, because Najee Harris signed his uh, contract the other day. And yep. somebody was making fun because his hat was sticking about three inches almost up top of his head. Like it, it either didn't fit or it's probably because of his hair. Obviously, I don't have that problem. But um, it, these guys get so much swag and gear. And it's like it's just so silly to think that in 2021, 
that you have to be there in person all the time in order to benefit from all these different things. I understand the teamwork, the camaraderie end of it, this and that, but you're going to have some guys that are in contract years, or there may be a guy that's sitting at home with a pregnant wife. You don't know everybody's situation. So to just guys might report late and still show up too. just, you know, just chill. Just take a chill pill on that. We're going to be talking about chill pills here in a second with today's topic as well. Um, I don't know. I'm feeling a little spicy because just to get started on this. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. I don't know. I, I got somebody telling me how I'm telling people how to be fans. And it's like, no, because most of the people that are talking about these things are just, they're stirring up controversy for no reason or bringing up just some terrible takes. And I don't agree with it. What? So. What? Steelers fans have terrible takes on things. What? Not, not always Steelers fans. So to speak, there, there's a few talking are, heads, talking oh, heads man. have terrible th- takes on things. Oh, no, they, oh, they absolutely do. Those are the Be ones still my heart. Oh, those I are can't the ones believe really it. Me. I'd say about 98% of the people who probably pay attention to us. Or don't fall into the category of uh, of a terrible yinzer, <laughs> of a jagoff type of fan. Uh, there's a few maybe that just uh, pay attention to us. I don't even know how they listen. If we're so biased and, and full of sunshine and rainbows, I don't know how they could even listen or pay attention to this programming. So right. uh, it just there's some people who just keep dwelling on the negative too. It's like, oh, Ben Roethlisberger's washed up. They should have done more with the offensive line. It was all the things I talked about in the last show. And it's just like, how many more times are you going to talk about this? We're, we're, we're not, you know, we're headed into Memorial Day weekend. They don't play any games until like around Labor Day. <laughs> We've got the whole yeah. summer. Are you going to repeat this and rehash this every few days for, for weeks on end? It just it gets under my skin. So anyways, with that said, Brian, you weren't with me on the last one, too. I think I said something. I was not. Somebody's like, oh, you just come up with these things for clicks and views. And I've never solicited for clicks and views. I do this because I enjoy it and I want to do it. You know what I mean? As as you do, I, I get really what benefit do we get? I mean, it's cool that there's a lot of people out there to support, you know, Steel City Underground, but I don't care if we have, you know, a thousand Twitter followers or 12,000 Twitter followers. It doesn't matter to me. It's We've like, been doing this since we had two subscribers. I know. So, you know, it's like, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it, as you said, it's gratifying. It's nice to know that other people are enjoying our, our conversation. Uh, we, we're happy to, to listen to your suggestions and, and take it into account and all those things. But if you, if you all decided we were just nuts and left, we'd still do it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. There was, um, I'm trying to think too, there, there was something I sent you the last time we were on, we were talking about the amount of, um, uh, people that, uh, have, um, uh, nobody listens to this program, right. Or to the, to the episodes. And I actually did the wrong number, um, we're pushing almost 2 million now because I didn't include YouTube and we started YouTube much later. So anyways, on to today's yep. topic. Yeah. On to today's topic. I, I got a little peeved at that as I, th- it's like the whole summer programming. If you want to listen to us, it's about us just ranting about other dumb stuff or talking <laughs> about coffee or toast. So enjoy. <laughs> if not, enjoy not toast. I'm not talking about toast. I'm toast. <laughs> no, you're not I'm permitted. Done. You're not permitted. I, that guy said you couldn't do it. Guy or gal. I don't really know. Could be them, whatever. Uh, it's you know you get a random name on the on YouTube. You don't ha- you don't even know have a clue. Could be the same person with three different accounts just complaining too. It's uh, the burners. <laughs> they That's did tell me too. never ever to say my lips are luscious and juicy again though. No, my don't lips, do that. My lips are luscious and juicy. <laughs> no, no, it's sm- the smooth, silky voice. That's the that's the comment I'll never forget. I'm talking about Brian here. Steelers. Everybody thinks. Oh, it's already painting me to put to, to spill out the words for this. We're, I said again, we're headed into the Memorial Day weekend, uh, the holiday weekend here. And people are thinking about how you can improve your team. That ship has sailed for the most part. There's going to be some opportunities that come up in a little bit. Mm-hmm. But the free agents that are already out there, that are still out there, there's 32 teams in the NFL. That's 31 others than the Steelers that have not taken an interest in seeking out some of these players. And we're going to name a few of them that have been linked by the true, the very true click baiters and people soliciting views and wanting you to see, you know, we're not corporate owned here. We don't have quotas. We don't have to pump out this crap 
you know, every day with some other new name that the Steelers should be having some interest in. And just to get you to go there and see that, you know, whatever movie's coming out this week is paid to advertise on that website. I mean, that's all good for those guys, but it, it, it creates an environment where there's just a, a lot of noise to filter through and it drives yeah. me crazy because then it actually makes our jobs harder to do. And then we're here talking about it. And then some people complain that we talk about it too, but let's bring up some of these and let me start at the very top of the list. I know you're looking at it too. We have a list. We're prepared. We may have a few off list off hook that comes here. Russell Okun. No offensive tackle Steelers didn't do enough at offensive tackle Brian they didn't just draft guys they didn't sign some other players and bring them back they don't have guys (laughs) they don't have anybody they need to go out and sign this guy it's been playing what 10 11 years yeah heading into 12 hasn't played a full season in the last two um do you remember back in the day, <clears throat> several years back, where we we signed uh, some somebody that was an ex Cowboys tackle? I can't remember who it was. Right? Flozell Adams. Yeah, Flozell. I'm the one who yeah, brought how, that up how, in the back rooms. How the hell did that work out? I, I well, you see, I missed that comment. How did it work out? Well, it didn't I work mean, out that great, right? You know, got to the Super Bowl that year, but yeah, but how much did he play? I, you know what? That's a great question. And he didn't come on like right away either. He was no, he was late in the guy. year. Yeah, the- because because we got injuries, right? And because they were thin and because trouble happened. No, he was actually they have him listed on Pro Football Reference as a 16 game starter that year, which is actually kind of surprising to me. So actually, if I'm thinking about this, correctly, we, have, we have to start over then. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. I mean, it gets it gets fuzzy. I, I bet who you're thinking of though too is Ryan Harris. A few years ago, only played a hand that may be. games. There I just a- remember there's a guy we brought in late the season. Yes, everybody the- was like, "Oh, he's great. He's going to be great. He was great like for the last 137 years, but now he's not great anymore." And and look, Russell Okung, quality player during his heyday. It is no longer his heyday, and he hasn't been able to stay healthy. So what the hell do you want? A guy that you can sign and waste money on that isn't going to start any games for you and isn't going to be there as a backup even because he's going to be hurt pass <laughs> no strongly pass and i'm trying to think there was someone that was brought uh and of course all i'm getting is marcus gilbert and i'm gonna find this name because it's going to drive me up a wall they traded with the arizona cardinals so the steelers were trying to rebuild their offensive line basically because they had to resort to having flozell adams that was his last year in the league yeah. he had played that was 13 his 13th season he had played for dallas the entire time uh he was just re- uh, removed from being a pro bowler a few years earlier but he was like 35 years old at this point and of course, more Mar- Levi Brown. That's who I couldn't think of. He didn't even get to play it down. He like tore his bicep in warmups. And it was like some type of conditional pick that they didn't meet the conditions because he never played a snap. Yep. And they were just in dire need. That was back, oh, 2013, October of 2013. So, needless to say, they don't have to jump the gun necessarily to go get a guy like Russell Okun, who is now, he's in his 30s. Uh, 32, maybe is he still 32? I hate when I can't see these things. Uh, he will be 33 around the same time that they traded for Levi Brown, believe it or not, almost the same dates here in October. And it's not to say that offensive linemen can't play into their early to mid thirties or defensive yeah. linemen. It's not unheard of, but it's not necessarily the peak of one's career. Uh, at, no pretty much quarterbacks are the only get, quarterbacks and special teamers like your your specialist your your kickers long snappers your punters, punter yeah those are the guys that that play until they're like 50 you know so anyway um russell coon let's see he was with the uh chargers the last three seasons and then last year what traded to the panthers and the panthers had a pretty miserable offensive line too if you'll recall and they've been trying to patchwork that as have the chargers and i mean he did all right but by this point he's played 13 games in the last two seasons if you believe this is somebody you need to pay spend the money on and he wants it in bitcoin by the way which could be a value it all depends if it well uh uh-oh 
I got Brian. To, Brian, you're a tech guy. You know about the doggy coin and everything. So we yeah. never mentioned doggy coin to this point. But since we brought up Russell Kung, I guess we have to uh, mention the cryptocurrency. I would. I don't know that I pay this guy in Chuck E. Cheese tokens at this point. No, <laughs> I, mean, I, I. You know, it's, it's look. I, I, it. I, no, it's the answer is just hard pass. No, he's not. He's um, not going to start. In, in, if you can invent your own cryptocurrency and pay him in that, and he's willing to accept it, fine. <laughs> Yinzer coin. <laughs> yeah, Yinzer coin. Yin, Yinco. We'll call it Yinco. Right? Um, it's it, it, Yin coin. Yin coin. There you jag, go. Yin jag, coin. Jag coin. Jag coin. Jag coin. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm set. Yeah. So you can pay him in Jag coin. Uh, and that you know the Steelers essentially just give him little images of coins, and he's willing to take it. Uh, I'm I'm okay with it then. Otherwise, if it's actual real money or fake real money that like Bitcoin, then I'm fine with it too. I'm not I'm, fine with it. I'm trying to see what his last contract was. Um, and I'm going to find that here because he's probably holding out for something decent. Almost all of these are going to be guys who want uh, maybe a decent chunk of change to continue playing because they feel their value is worth it and they've been paid well right. over the years uh, or longevity. So that means two, three year contract, even if they won't maybe fulfill that. Uh, some sort of upside guarantee that will pay over those few years. So it's going to handcuff whatever franchise signs them to paying a little bit of that out a, as a cap hit over that period of time. And then they're also probably looking to actually play. Oh, yeah. bring this guy in for depth. They don't want to be a depth. They don't want to be a backup. They'd rather just, they've made their money. They've made their millions. If they were smart with it, they didn't spend all of it. And they're going to sit at home with the, maybe the wife and kids. You know what I mean? It's just, <laughs> they're like, I don't need to beat my body up anymore. I'm 32. I'm going to be 33. I've already made all of these. One more million. And it's not even the money that they get because then they got to pay taxes. And if you, depending on where you go play, uh, uprooting, moving, all these other expenses, uh, just, it doesn't end up being worth it. It's like I, I was always amazed that the then Oakland Raiders were gobbling up guys like, let's say, Lamar Woodley, for example. They were signing all of these old yeah. veterans past their prime. I was amazed that these guys would go out there for a one year contract, considering the cost of living and the taxes in California. I'm like, they, they got to get paid enough money to make that worthwhile. Uh, changing to West Coast time and that if they hadn't already been in that area. And there's just a whole lot of human element to this. I, I, if I'm this guy, uh, if I'm a Kung or some of these other guys I'm going to be talking about, I'm not looking to be Zach Banner or Chooks Akora for his backup because that's what's in the Steelers' plans right now. Or yep. if Dan Moore Jr. outperforms one of these guys and gets a starting role, maybe not week one, but maybe week seven. We, you know, you don't know. Or opportunity knocks, maybe one of them gets hurt. But then there's always the chance they're still sitting there waiting to come and play too because the other teams aren't necessarily banging down their door for their services. Yeah, it, it's just, you know, look, everybody always wants the what they consider to be the new shiny toy, even if the new shiny toy is actually old, rusty and dented. Um, <clears throat> you know, they just want the new toy. Uh, oh, that's that's a new toy for us. So we need it. I, you know, Russell Okung, is, it, he's, he was an excellent player, but no, it's, it's not. They don't need it. I was just at the flea market this weekend and I was discussing this with a buddy of mine. And the sense of value that some of the vendors there have of their old, used, dirty, dusty, dingy, like I would never sell some of this stuff, let alone what they are asking for. In, for, in particular, I'm looking record players, vintage video games, uh, not even vintage. I mean, it's hard for me to call Nintendo vintage now, the original NES, but I guess it is. This is all oh, stuff yeah. that people were throwing out. They couldn't even give away. It was junk just a few years ago. Now all of a sudden it has some retro appeal. And I'm like, I'm looking at like these record players that are older than me and people want like a hundred bucks for it. And I'm like, I don't even know if this thing works. You know what I mean? That's the way I look Supply at it. Guy. Like, that's yeah. what I'm looking at. I, I equate it to the same thing. Russell Okung here. You're asking, maybe asking too much here for something. Well, that, the, the problem is obviously there's no demand here. Yeah, and that's if there's still a RAND, there's a minus demand. And, and if there's no demand, you can't get away with, with demanding top dollar. So, you know, if, if you got a bunch of bozos who don't know anything about a record player that are all out looking for a record player, you can ask for top dollar because they don't know what the hell they're buying, right? 
But you, you know, if, if nobody's looking, I bet you that record player comes down from a hundred dollars to five dollars pretty quick. <laughs> well, that's the way I was thinking. So my 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 seven year old daughter likes these things called squish mellows, and they're, they're these stuffed animal things are real soft, like a pillow, almost like memory foam, right? And I was just thinking okay. the same thing. So you've got these guys, these these jags that are out there buying them all up. And then trying to mark them up three, four or five times what they are. So if it's like something that I bought for Easter and it was a limited run and was like, you know, $5 for it at Walgreens or something, they're asking 20, 25 bucks for this thing. And it's like, yeah, good luck with that, pal. I'm like, uh, just wait until that trend like dies in three to six months. And then you're left uh, holding the bag there. It's like kind of like the people holding the bag with gasoline, <laughs> but that's a whole other story. People tr- no, there's stories out there too. Everybody I know like freaked out, filled up a bunch putting, of their containers, put, putting it in a tub of, of <laughs> somebody had an open top tub from Walmart, filling it up so that it will slosh all over the back of their car, putting it in the truck of their car, Florida woman, you know, as they say, Florida woman in, in a state that doesn't actually get their gas from the pipeline that was having an issue. They still went nuts because, of course, they were Florida man or Florida woman, whatever. (laughs) Well, one of those, the car caught on fire. And yet others, uh, like, you know, I go on Reddit every now and then. God forbid, you know, yeah, you do the little the the power of Christ compels you a little sign of the cross here because I feel dirty every time I go on Reddit. (laughs) There's just I don't know. There's too much. There's too. It's too overwhelming. Yes, never been on there. I've never been on there. Let's put it this way. You, you, any of the p- people in the comments uh, section, maybe on YouTube or something, do you go on Reddit and talk about football there? Because that is just, that's a war zone. That's not something that you really want to well, do. It, it, here's something funny. So last time I was on Reddit, I apparently I made some disparaging comments about Kansas and Kansas City. And so my wife watched the episode. She called me out and said, you're, you're annoying your fans in Kansas and Kansas City. Now, I don't know that we have any fans in Kansas and Kansas City. But if we do, I apologize to you. So the question is, since I just disparaged Florida, <laughs> you know, uh, like I think that that, you know, Florida, there's certain things that there's just a reputation around. Right. And there's a reputation of you're going to get weird news stories that will start with Florida man or Florida woman. <laughs> and I want to know if we have people in Florida listening. Does that bother you? <laughs> oh, there's a, there's a ton of Florida. I guarantee you there's like entire Steelers fan groups down there. Uh, Matt may even be listening. That's down there. Or heads up one of them. And he's got, we're going to get some hate mail. You are anyways, you're going to do the world tour. I'm sure you're going to tick off everyone before we're all said and done this summer. Um, but yeah, my whole point in mentioning this was there's people that have filled up the gas tanks and now they're trying to sell it off because gas has a shelf life. They don't need this. They panic bought, bought all of it, like the toilet paper yep. and that, and now they can't get rid of it. And that's like the list of free agents. So I know we only talked about one so far. There's really, some of these might make more sense. Morgan Moses is another one that comes up a lot. Uh, recently released from the Washington football team. He is uh, 29, just uh, turned 29. So he's a little bit younger of a guy. He's probably looking to make a little bit more money maybe than what the Steelers might be able to pay too. See, that's the other factor. The Steelers, they're somewhere in the middle of the league with the salary cap. They have finagled their way into not being completely choked out by this thing. But just one contract could put them right back into the base right here. So... Uh, let me see. He, he had, uh, previously signed, let's see. Uh, well, that was a rookie deal. Darn it. Why, why do these things never have the information that I need on them? I'm going to find this out, but Morgan Moses, uh, here's a guy that doesn't I'm sound like Collinsworth. Now here's a guy since his rookie year after his rookie year, his sophomore slate here in uh, 2015 on through 2020, he hasn't missed a game kind of an iron man type guy there. So if you want somebody that, uh, you, that's dependable, it's somebody you might be knocking on the door. Now, again, this is where we don't know. I mentioned this on the other show, Brian. I'll say it out loud to you or repeat it for those who didn't see it. Am I sold on the tackles that the Steelers have right now? I, I don't know that we know enough about them. We didn't, don't know. Did we have a don't problem know. with Chooks Akor for last year? No, but mm-hmm. he was a right tackle last year. He might be a left tackle this year. We didn't really see much of Zach Banner. We got to see like one half of football, three quarters at best or something in week yep. one. And then he went down with an injury. He's got to come back from two. So are there question marks? Sure. But the people that are there watching these guys in shorts, they have more of an intimate knowledge behind closed doors of what they got and what these guys may be capable of. So I trust 
their vision. I trust their judgment and uh, I trust them giving them a chance. Let's give them a shot. You don't necessarily need to bring old yeller in and, right. and just then what's that do too? You know what I mean? Uh, is it really insurance? You might sign this guy and then cut him in training camp. <laughs> and then, you know, it's, it's, you're, you're wasting a spot that might be for someone else, but Morgan Moses, I don't think he's one of those. He's been a name that's been more closely linked, I think, with the Steelers, just because a lot of people feel, oh, because they didn't take someone in the first round, then they need to go uh, over to what's the leftovers here. And Moses is one that wasn't available at the beginning of free agency, much like Steven right. Nelson getting released during this uh, offseason process, and he's still sitting out there. And I don't know what he's looking for. Apparently up to 14 teams have contacted about. I, I think that's always the agent putting that information out as well. They, they, Everybody's interested, so you should yeah. be interested. <laughs> yeah, you need to jump on this. It's a limited time people, offer. People are saying. <laughs> it's the same exact tactics. Flea markets, is. Uh, TV, as, as uh, seen on TV, it's yeah. uh, the infomercials. It's all these same tactics. It's all, it's all the same basic marketing. It's, pitch. it's all pitch. Yeah, the commodity is just a, a pro football player right here. Uh, his extension was um, for five years, $40 million, of which hasn't all been uh, realized. And I do believe he's made, let's see, cashed out for about 28.6 right now. And the uh, Washington just took a 1.9 cap hit this year. So he's not necessarily uh, bringing in a whole lot from the other team where somebody could just give him a rock bottom deal right. if he's going to take it. Uh, I'm sure he may have had some suitors so far, and, and some of that's got to be getting ironed out. Would I bend my ear for this? Yeah, sure. Why not? But it's still. We're talking right tackle, not left tackle. I think left tackle yeah. is the one a lot of people are concerned with because everyone thinks Ben is going to get hit like a pinata or something, even though he really he hasn't been since Bruce Arians left. I got into this fight once again on social media. Uh, Bruce Arians did real well for himself. Well, up until he went and got Tom Brady and all of his buddies, and Tampa has all these guys under rookie contracts paying them peanuts. Yeah, they have a pretty talented team. What did he do last year with Jameis Winston? What did he do before with the, the Cardinals and Carson Palmer? And he, he won one playoff game in overtime with Larry Fitzgerald making this long catch and run. Like that's all yep. he's got to his credit up until Tom Brady comes. And even then, seven and five, they go into the bye. There was all that smoke about Tom Brady not getting along with Bruce Arians. This isn't working. And whenever they did, Brady only threw one more interception all the way into the postseason. Then he had the game with Green Bay where he had three, but he, he had like 12, 13 picks for the year or otherwise uh, the, the, up through that seven and five. They almost didn't make the playoffs. It's yep. all Bruce Arians, but Bruce Arians anyways, five years under Bruce Arians, Ben Roethlisberger got sacked more times since Bruce Arians has left after the 2012 season. It's getting close. That gap is almost narrowing, but Ben only went down like 13 times last year. 14 total yeah. for all the Steelers quarterbacks. Is that the dink and dunk, Randy Fickner, quick pass? Some of it, yeah, absolutely. But it's not like the Steelers quarterbacks are getting knocked around as bad as everyone makes it. So is if Zach Banner is at the left tackle, how much worse can he be maybe than Alejandro Villanueva was last year? I, I don't think you're going to... Are you going to trail off just that much worse? And, and there's still some other guys on the roster that are sitting there that maybe could fill that role. So do you reach out and go get another tackle? I, I don't know. I think I think if they were interested, they would have done this already. And I'm not sure how much they're handcuffed by whatever else they're thinking of, like a TJ Watt extension or something like that that could be looming too. Yep. Uh, there's There's – the Steelers have the reputation of spending to the limit. And, and they probably will still do that, but they do it, you know, with, with a combination of, uh, you know, trying to keep their own people as we're talking about, like with, with, um, you know, TJ or, or limited veteran signings. I, it's very unlikely to me that they're going to pull anything off, but you never know because again, somebody like a Joe Hayden becomes available that they don't expect to be available. They want to be able to be proactive about that and be able to move on it if it happens. So. You know, that's there's not a concern that they're not going to spend to the limit. They probably will. The question is, where do they put those dollars right now? And, you know, is Morgan Moses the right spot? I don't I don't know. I don't think so. But it's not anything against Morgan Moses. I just don't know that he's going to fit with what their financial position is and whether it also 
hamstrings them if something else comes up that they will they're going to go like oh crap i wish we had still had this you know no absolutely i agree with you 100 percent. there uh, i was actually trying to look and see if i could get um some of the names here well coons uh, kind of at the top of this list as well or i mean uh, i'm actually kind of surprised that you know some other names haven't jumped off the page as far as uh, players that are still floating around in free agency, like Melvin Ingram is one that I haven't heard about yet. Uh, at least like with the Steelers. Now, a lot of people were talking, I guess part of the smoke to the fire with looking for edge depth was Ryan Kerrigan. Apparently, what was that? Adam Schefter or one of these guys had tweeted out that the Steelers had inquired about the former Washington um, edge rusher, yeah, long time edge rusher going to, you know, staying within the division, which we talk about happening a lot, going to the Eagles. And I guess the Steelers were sniffing around and, you know, he, he based his decision on whatever that may be. So then all of a sudden, uh, you know, you see a lot of the different noise. And one of the names was Justin Houston that comes out. And at first I'm like, are, are, I'm in the same camp all the time. Are you kidding me? Like, really? You know, blah, 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 blah. It's the same way I was with Okung. I'd start rolling my eyes, but Houston, I don't know. If you remember, we did a show, geez, Brian, three, four years ago, because this was like during all the Bud Dupree, when it was fashionable to hate on Bud Dupree, he was a bust. And we talked about comparable, um, not really just outside linebackers, but some defensive ends, but it had to be guys that dropped into coverage that were right. Capable. It wasn't just like the Calais camels of the world that just go after the quarterback nonstop. Cause it just wasn't a fair comparison to what Bud Dupree was doing. And the one name that we came up with that we linked to being comparable to Bud Dupree, there were two, I think one was Bruce Irvin. The second one was Justin Houston. Yep. And you're wondering why, why is he still sitting around out here? Olivier Vernon sitting around out here too. Trent Murphy came up on one of the other websites too. It's, you know, this would be all great, but this is just like the thing I was complaining about as an annoyance was everyone forgets that Alex Highsmith's there. In fact, Alex Highsmith already quoted during OTAs is using this as motivation. Everyone drafting edge rushers. Alex Highsmith put up better numbers than Jadavian Clowney did last year. If you put his last eight games up against the only eight the Clowney played, Alex Highsmith's the better player. Uh, and, And on film too, I'm sorry. (laughs) <laughs> just all the way around, just a, a better player, not to mention uh, younger and cheaper. So, but hey, the Cleveland Browns are a force because they signed the former first overall whatever pick as if they haven't had oodles of those over the years. <laughs> so uh, I'm trying to pick up Justin Houston. Let's see what he did last year because I actually like this as a fit. But then again, he's probably wanting to go somewhere where he's going to play. And I would tend to think that 32 years old, Probably still has a little bit left in the tank. We know James Harrison did. Yeah. Uh, Would be his 11th season in the league that he's entering right now. And he has played all 16 games, all 32 over the last two years for the Colts. Put up, uh, let's see here, 11 sacks and eight sacks. So 19 total. Some good numbers. I'll take it. I'll take either of those. Forced a few fumbles, recovered a few as well. Uh, Is it? Decent uh, tackler, not as many tackles last year as in 2019, but uh, I guess that some of that has to deal with opportunity. Are they running at his side versus someone else? Uh, I have to say yeah. that I don't watch enough of the Colts film to be able to say that, but on paper here, looking at a guy like this, if he were willing to take a, a role where he's rotating in, if he's not the starter, realizes there's a younger player, that's going to be playing ahead of them, then I would be willing maybe to give Justin Houston a shot. It just depends how much money it takes in order to make that happen. It seems to be, I know it's going to sound like the broken record. I already warned everyone, but that's, that's really what it boils down to 32 years old opportunity to play how much money he had a uh, contract with the Colts for two. We remember this because we were talking about whether he could have been a link before bud broke out here. Uh, yeah. Two years, twenty-three million. No one thought that was like really breaking the bank two years ago. If they could do something in the same ballpark, maybe a little bit less. But again, you've already got the two starters in place. I don't know that it merits spending that money right now. Yeah, let me let me leap into the matrix for a second. Ooh. Okay, I'm in the matrix. 
figuring stuff out. Let me see. The answer is no. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Wait a second. Brian had to use one of these fancy background filters because I was egging him on in the ba- uh, offline here before we started the programming and it, and it didn't quite look like them. You didn't have the trickling code, but you had enough of it back there. So yes. don't jump I, back I into the right. matrix. I'm not going to jump back. Into the <laughs> but um, here's look, Justin Houston might be a, a nice ad, right? The question is, does he want to be a nice ad as a depth player? Because the chances that he becomes a starter seem limited. Could he beat out Alex Highsmith? I, I don't think so, but maybe, maybe he's got enough juice left to do that. And would that be the end of the world? Probably not. But do you want, you know, is, is the amount of production you're going to get out of that so much greater than what you would expect out of a second year player who should show you, you know, a great amount of improvement? The Steelers always expect a huge improvement out of their second year players. So if, if it just doesn't, you know, again, it's just the uh, grass is greener on the other side. To here, give me the give me the broken, bent, rusty toy. <laughs> I, I don't, you know, I don't, I just don't see it. It's it, it's got to be the right fit. You know what I mean? And there's there was the at one point there was a whole lot of speculation about Justin Houston, and then it kind of went away. And there, I think the reason it kind of went away is because it was just a malarkey. <laughs> I mean, I really don't know. I don't know what kind of talks end up happening. A lot of that stuff is behind closed doors unless an agent mm-hmm. tries to, again, uh, put that smoke around the fire and, and drum up some interest for their client. I mean, that's their job is to get the guy hired and they get a commission off of it. So it's yeah. usually uh, beneficial <laughs> for the agent to get that guy, whatever guy it is, uh, signed to a contract. So, um, I mean, I'm not even really looking to talk about Trent Murphy, who hasn't really put up a whole bunch of stats, or Bruce Irvin, John Simon, any of these other guys. Uh, one of the more recent ones that's popped up is Malik Hooker. And that's interesting. Kind of a local guy, Western Pennsylvania guy, right? Yeah. Played, played two games last year, has never played a full season at all. Former first round pick free safety, not exactly a position that you need a starter. Where else could he be used at? Does he want to be depth? Uh, do you use, can you deploy him as like maybe a dimebacker type role? We didn't even see Sean Davis used a whole lot like that before, but right. just, just the little bit of rumblings that came out about it had me thinking about how the Steelers double dipped with like Terrell Edmonds and had Morgan Burnett. Maybe they want somebody versatile. I I, I just don't know. In fact, he wasn't too far from, um, where I grew up, Brian, Newcastle, Pennsylvania, man, had a my one of my uh, early high school girlfriends from Newcastle, Pennsylvania, actually so. was a hooker. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I, I, I certainly I was trying to just trying to get the, the relation <laughs> there. You know, he's like, oh, Malik Hooker, he came from my area. One of my girlfriends was a hooker. I don't oh, you this know. Is, <laughs> this is very legit. Um, family was involved in the funeral parlor business, so her dad could have disposed of me very easily. <laughs> <laughs> not somebody you screwed did, was it did he look like the phantasm dude no no nor did he oh, look like know. somebody from like paul bearer from the wwe or anything like that yeah. how about another db um richard sherman <laughs> now <laughs> Who i cannot much- make the steelers call him i cannot make them call me <laughs> but but we're going to put it out there anyways that yeah. Richard Sherman is <laughs> that richard sherman's going to maybe be linked to the steelers even though he said just flat out I've had no contact with the Steelers. Um, and I can't make them call me. <laughs> yeah, I can't make them call me. He's 33 years old. Again, it's another thing. A, a depth type guy. Everybody's sleeping on Cam Sutton. I, I got to keep banging the desk. If I'm wrong about Cam Sutton, I'm wrong about Cam Sutton. People say I don't know anything about football. I looked at Cam Sutton. Other people that do know things about football have looked at Cam Sutton. We all tend to think Cam Sutton is the dude. He's going to be the next guy. He's going to be one of the few picks that Kevin Colbert made of uh cornerback specifically that's panned out over the years uh, uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna throw a little finding forester at you right now oh he's the man now dog <laughs> <laughs> but you got but you have to do it like sean connery or at least a really bad imitation like off of yeah, the. i'll let you Jeopardy. deal with i'll let you deal with the bad imitations <laughs> I'll, I'll take i'll take s words for 100 alex Swords, yeah, was, swords that was, for one hundred. <laughs> that was bad. It was really bad. <laughs> I can't do it. My dad's a little better at it. He used to. It, there was like a line in that uh, movie that was pretty 
pretty cringy even for the legendary sean connery he said something like you can do it dog and it just doesn't roll off the tongue quite right with his accent so uh, i have to, former steelers coming back this is where we i think we end this out out squash not happening it. squash squash him. which one do we squash first let me do lev bell Let's just squash them both <laughs> well we will squash them both uh i think the lev bell fires have finally been put out because of yeah. Najee harris come on. so come on just What's he going to do? Are they really going to bring him back? To You complained about him the entire time he was here, whether he was hurt through no fault of his own or he didn't show up or he made a rap song or got caught smoking pot or with somebody smoking pot, whatever be the case. And, and this is the guy you want back. Look, uh, Lev, Lev Bell was nice to my daughter when she met him. Therefore, he has a special place in my heart. And I don't have anything against Le'Veon Bell. Do I want him to come back? No. Why? Because what the hell is he going to do? <laughs> Sit on the bench and never play? He was quite capable of doing that in Kansas City. I think he's an excellent bench warmer. I don't need any more of those. No, I have no interest in Le'Veon Bell. No, I'm, I'm in agreement with you. And it's nothing personal against Le'Veon Bell. It's just... He made his bed and he has to sleep in it. Uh, his business dealings and a team... It's it's going to draw a bunch of attention and uh, unwanted attention to the team for a team that finally got past all that. They don't yeah, they're not going to want to deal with that. Another guy to kind of oh maybe burn his bridge that he can't walk back over now where the he grass caught it. wasn't greener. He did he catch caught it. it. Jesse caught, caught it. it. Uh, Jesse caught it. So hey, maybe they're saving money for Jesse James. Uh, Jesse James had a very nice contract from the Detroit Lions that surprised all of us for a fifth round pick that has been basically the tight end two, got called upon a lot as a tight end one, but man, I'm not Pat Fryermuth sitting number two, presumably beside Eric Ebron right now. I'd rather go with either Zach Gentry, continue his development or go with Kevin Rader, the guy who gives you special teams upside. And we know can pancake block miles Garrett. I'll take those two guys. Flip. Uh, I don't want to say flip a coin. Let them duke it out, battle it out. Maybe one goes to the practice squad, one goes on the active roster. Jesse James, tight end threes don't even get a helmet. Okay? Right. So are you going to put Jesse James in over Pat Fryermuth or Eric Ebron? Unless one of them's hurt, that's a that's a big no. Yeah. There isn't even veteran pay out there that I think, not alone the way he trashed the organization on his way out with some of the things that he said. So closing that door. I'm yep. done with that. Is there anybody we missed? It, probably. There's been probably. so many of these different articles. At least we don't have to hear about quarterbacks. That's uh, Sam Darnold or anybody like that. Cam Newton, like the previous year. Uh, Not until next year. Then we'll have to hear about it. No, we'll still hear about it. The, whether they went with the right decision, Ben's too old, all this and that. Uh, I, know, uh, I know. It's a young, <laughs> old man yelling at the clouds. Old man Simpson. <laughs> Why are you doing this? <laughs> I think the Steelers, I think they did well. Uh, I think they have more holes maybe to fill this year. I think we'll see. Maybe we'll talk about this in an upcoming episode about how much opportunity there is for the rookies, what their expectations can be this year and beyond. Uh, and it's always an ongoing, it's it's a fluid process. It's never static. Absolutely. So it, th- players are going to get cut at the end of training camp. Yep. And the Steelers have scouted some. There's even going to be some that may be on the bubble. Maybe guys that may end up on waivers, Vance McDonald, somebody like that. They've done other ones like JJ, what, Wilcox or whatever, and it didn't pan out. Yeah. But some of them have and some of them haven't. And those are the type of players. Joe Hayden ended up happening. That's one of them. So that's why they're not spending the money right now. It's not like in action or anything like that. It's the long game. They're they're looking and there may be someone who ends up on this roster week one that you didn't. They tried it with uh, Dustin Colquitt also last year. So got got released from Kansas City. They ended up – Jordan Berry wins the job, and then Jordan Berry the next day, sorry, bud, here's your pink slip. They yep. ended up coming back. And, you know, those are the type of things that end up happening. Uh, so uh, I how's, that, how's that big fat punter doing? I don't know yet. I haven't seen him do any of the cone drills. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I want, I want to see the big fat. Big, I need the big fat punter. Where's I the need, big fat punter? I need to know if he. I know. I need to know if he's comfortable in his skin for us to call him a big fat punter because I almost feel like we're shaming him when no, no, completely I, comfortable in his body. 
He should be. I don't care if you're big and fat. Oh, if I agree. People are awesome regardless. I just want a big fat punter. I like it. It's unique. <laughs> it's unique. Yeah. He's different. I want yeah. to, I want to see him take somebody out on special teams. That's what I want to see. I want to see him pancake Orlando Pace pancake the crap out of somebody on a special team play. I I don't I don't I just get visions of Sean Sweezham at a Hall of Fame. No, no, game, not at the I knee. I don't want that to happen. Look, see that the difference is he's humongous. <laughs> So he's gonna John squeeze him. It's a little waif of a guy trying to stick his leg out to tackle this guy. He just run into you. Boom! It's like he's defensive end size. <laughs> You're like the Frank Caliendo, John Madden boom. impression. Uh, hey, yeah, boom. there you go. He got him. So, <laughs> what do you think about that, Pat? So, anyway, I like it. <laughs> I like it. I, I I'm looking forward to that, but I'm not necessarily sure I want to see it either. It's a, it's kind of like it's one of those things where you don't want to see it, but you can't look away. You know what I mean? It must happen. It, we it must we, happen. We will will it into existence. <laughs> yes. Well, well, my friend, my brother from another mother. It's always good having you here, man. We got absolutely more often. Um, maybe rotate around and give me a break for once. You can always go. absolutely get, we'll get figure get, something out. Yeah, get one of the Zacks or get some the Zach attacks. I don't know. I wish there was more to talk about. We could do more of these shows, but I, t- we I think could. We, we might annoy some people already with some of the, the extra. Well, yeah, I'm talking yeah, about yeah. flea markets. You know what I mean? But it's it's true. <laughs> this is the flea market. The, the free agency mar- free agents that are out there. It's, it's not a free agency market. It's a flea market. Uh, tell you what. Do this. Listeners. Loyal listeners. Friends. Friends out there in the... Uh, how did Stanley used to do it? Uh, Excelsior. Uh, you know, <laughs> what if, uh, what if, yeah, Excelsior, all our loyal listeners out there, whatever. Um, uh, uh, tell us what you want us to talk about, <laughs> yeah, sure. And and maybe don't we, tell. maybe we will, maybe we'll blow you off and ignore it, and maybe we'll listen. I, you know, I don't know, it's just we got we got time to kill, man. <laughs> I don't know, I've covered some of that. I know we've got some things to talk about with season tickets, training camp dates, and things that'll come up eventually, and uh, maybe maybe Jagacoin will take off too. So <laughs> yeah, Jagged coin. Yeah. Jagged coin. Yeah. <laughs> We're pun intended coining new terms all the time here. So we try to be hip, hip and trendy and hip to whatever. be square lit. And I don't know what else we always say that all the time. Anyways, Brian, we really should stop wasting everyone's time <laughs> for the 2% of you that are still hanging on here. Thank you. Yeah, our two, hang our on. two percenters. Thank hang you. Our two percenters. For, <laughs> hang around for the ads that play afterwards too. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, sure. um, don't forget to like comment, subscribe, review, complain, whatever it is you may uh, like to do. We appreciate you supporting, viewing, listening, wherever you are in in Steelers Nation. My name's Joe. His name's Brian. And until next time, we encourage everyone to be safe, be good. We'll catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com.